Hello and welcome to Bastion Land Broadcasting, which is returning after a, I want to say about three month hiatus. Um, essentially, um, I, <laughs> I reached a saturation point with um, what I was doing with the broadcasts uh, towards the end of last year. Decided to take a little bit of a break and I'm feeling refreshed. I'm feeling inspired to do some more video stuff. And one of the things that is getting me really inspired at the moment is what I'm going to be talking about today, which is um, I'm trying to avoid just like doing like clickbaity hyperbole, but this is genuinely like probably the RPG that I'm most excited about right now. And I've bought quite a few RPG things uh, recently. Um, so I've had a Kickstarter arrive from Orbital Blues, uh, which is from Soul Muppet, uh, which is a very nice looking book, but I've not really had a chance to dig into it yet. Um, weirdly, around the, just, just before Orbital Blues arrived, um, I ordered a, a print-on-demand version of Traveller because I've never really dipped into Traveller, uh, and it's something that I think will... Uh, will have some interesting ideas for me, but um, so it's kind of like continuing the theme. We've got Orbital Blues, we've got Traveller on my desk at the minute. Um, not quite on the same theme, but I got Stonehell because I, I wanted a dungeon. But the thing that's got me excited at the moment is this little flimsy printed out booklet. Um, and the reason I'm going to go... I'm going to talk about this a bit today and talk about why this little pamphlety leaflet that I printed out, um, and I, I think this one is actually even free, um, why this has got me excited. Um, so what am I actually talking about here? I am talking about 2400, which is, I mean, it is, it is an RPG, but it's also like multiple RPGs. I guess you would call it a modular RPG if you were being fancy. Um, it is a lo-fi sci-fi RPG by Jason Tocci, and um, you can get it on itch. It is incredibly cheap. I mean, six US dollars gets you 12 of these little sort of four-page booklets. Um, and aside from anything else that I talk about today, I think these are worth buying pretty much regardless of where you stand. I think there's enough interesting stuff going on that that just 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 grab them for that price. So that's my kind of push. Um, I need to give like a disclaimer, and I didn't even realize this until today, but <laughs> um, Jason does actually credit Electric Bastion and as an influence here, which makes me question his judgment slightly. So maybe we can't trust him um, completely. But these are a series of little modular games that all use the same system. And they're all based around the same kind of tone of like this lo-fi sci-fi. And that I think there's a line here somewhere that says, you know, they, they could be the same setting, but they might not be, depending on how you what you want to do with it. And a good analogy that I heard is sometimes when you get games like Apocalypse World, in Apocalypse World, there's this big thing about having a your character playbook. And each little character player book is like a self-contained thing that sort of gets you excited to play that class. Well, I feel like this does that for different settings. So I'm going to go into the... Um, I'm going to jump into the actual um, book itself. Um, bear with me. I'm going to quickly do one thing that I just realized I need to do before we go into this. Let me start again. 2400 by Jason Tocci. Um, all the games use the same system, but um, they present a different world in each booklet. Um, and it's presented in a way that is... Um, it's presented in a way that it is only presenting what's important to the game, and that's what gets me really excited. I'm going to go into the mechanics because it's a, it's kind of the least interesting bit of the book. Um, so let me get my view correct. Bear with me. Um, so the rules are 
it's a it's got a really simple and I, I mean this sounds like an insult but I mean this in a good way it's got a really straightforward kind of boring <laughs> mechanic at its core um the actual mechanic is not that interesting and again that don't don't take me to don't take that to be a bad thing um because the interesting part of this game is not in its sort of one rule um and what happens is you roll a die typically a d6 or if you've got a skill you're going to be rolling a higher die and one or two means you suffer a disaster three to four means it's a setback so like a partial success and five plus means it's a success uh, the higher the better and that's kind of it and then there's a few little things where you can gain extra dice if you've got support from someone or a help helpful sort of situation you can roll a smaller die if you're hindered in some way all kind of again i, I don't mean this in a bad way super basic stuff um, and each of the booklets has this same little rules section here. Then where it gets interesting is the characters section generally fits on one column. Uh, the ship section is a specific section to this uh, Cosmic Highway, which is the, I don't know if Cosmic Highway is considered like the introductory module, but it, it's one that I see people recommending a lot. And then on the back page of this booklet, you have sort of your, this is the entire world. So as you can see, it's like super dense with um, things that you will need at the table. Like the player character section is full of like hooks for your player character. The DM section, GM section is just full of like um, hooks for, um, hooks for actually running the game and coming up with interesting situations. And that's it. I've kind of showed you the whole game. Um, but to kind of show what I mean, I thought we could do a little demonstration. Why not? Let's let's bring up the old uh, uh, notepad. Are we really going? Yeah, we're going notepad. It's low. It's lo-fi sci-fi, isn't it? And it doesn't get much more lo-fi than the notepad. So... With character creation, it's like, it's very archetypal, and I, I like that. I don't think, I think games where you have, like, a setting that's full of archetypes, it's easy to think of that as being, like, vanilla, but I think you, you players really benefit from having those to latch onto. So, they're very archetypal, like the captain, the doctor, the engineer. In case you can, haven't uh, been able to work it out, the general concept for this cosmic highway is, I, I feel like it's very, kind of, Firefly-inspired. Um, you've got a ship, you've got a crew, now you need the credits to keep them flying. So, let's make our captain. So, they're skilled in persuasion. They get a D8. Intimidation, they get a D8. Um, and you get one ship upgrade of your choice. So, let's look at our ship. So, this is all the stuff that your ship comes with as standard. It comes with, like, some communications, some armor, uh, some sensors, and a, a drive, but we can choose to upgrade one of them. So maybe we'll upgrade the... I mean, and they're, they're very like... Everything is so brief. You, It relies on the... It relies on... A, it's, a, it's a high trust game. If I upgrade my comms with this jammer, there's no rules as to how this jammer works. We just know that our comm system now has a jammer. And uh, it sort of trusts you to be able to make that work, which is what really is interesting to me. Uh, so yeah, well, our ship has a... So this is this is on our ship. This isn't us. So our ship has a jammer upgrade. And then we choose our origin, so we can be a downsider, so like from a planet, which means we get three skills as we like. And it, you just go up in die steps. So it kind of like, if you take a skill, it's D8 at first, then it goes up to D10 and then up to D12. Or it could be a spacer, which gives us some space walking skills and three skill increases. Um, but we might be hindered in high gravity. And again, it's it seems obvious to say this, but little bits of world building are just everywhere because th there's no room to not do that. E there's just like setting is crammed into every little bit of the uh, of the booklet. 
So I think we're going to be a I'm going to be a downsider. We're from a planet, so we get three skill increases. So we could say, okay, well we're going to increase our persuasion to D10. That's one, and then maybe we'll pick two other skills. And you can choose from this list, or you can make some up. So maybe we'll pick one. Yeah, I think we'll we'll give our we'll give them some piloting. I don't know if we're like flying solo here. Um, and then we'll pick one that isn't on here. So what would be a good skill for our like captain to have that isn't on here? There's some terrible jokes going on about uh, jammers in the uh, chat, which I appreciate. Um, so, I mean, it's it's like the joke one you put in, like, flower arranging or something. But maybe maybe we are going to put poetry. It's, this is, what, <laughs> this is uh, from having Orbital Blues next to me. I'm sure that's probably got some sad space poetry in it. Um, so, there we go. That's kind of our class, our character. Oh, and we get some equipment. So, we get a smartphone and two credits. And the, the equipment list is, like, so Spartan. Um, and costs are just, like, uh, it's stuff's worth one or two, you know? Um, so we're going to give ourselves... Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take some grenades. They seem like they'd be fun. Oh, four of any... Oh, okay. Well, we're going to take... We'll just take, like, two sets of grenades. So we'll take four EMP grenades and four smoke grenades. I mean, what's, what problem can't be solved by either an EMP grenade or a smoke grenade? Um, exactly. Um, and I think that's it then. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, so your ship comes with a basic version of all these sort of systems and 10 credits gets you an upgrade to one of those systems and um oh i've 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 missed i've said that our character's done and i've missed like the coolest bit so we, we mechanically the character is done but we have all this stuff here so i do have some dice here so our character's name, Dallas. I mean, Captain Dallas. It almost feels too good. Um, ship name, I get five. The ship's called the Caprice. Okay. Um, crew attire. I like this one. Obviously... Anyone that's played Mothership or looked at Mothership, I think there's certainly some influence here. Um, more so in one of the other 2400 uh, games that we'll be looking at. And ship logo t-shirt. Again, that's just a cool little detail that starts to get your mind thinking about this character that they've got. They haven't got a uniform, they've just got like a, a t-shirt with the ship's logo on it. And our patch... Um, <laughs> I kind of hate this one. The patch is a Ford logo. I mean, being called Dallas and having a Ford logo patch, it kind of suggests... Um, yeah. We, we're getting into, as, as Ava says in the chat, we're getting into Duncan Idaho status. Um, but we did that really quickly. Obviously, in an ideal situation, we'd have more players and you'd, you'd generate a bit of a crew. But all that came from this... Here. And we've already got, I feel like we've got some hooks in there. And then this back page is like, this is my favourite bit of the um, of the games. And I feel like, I've, there are like 12 of these. Um, there are 12 of these. I've not printed them all out, but I will be looking through all of them tonight. So, you know, strap in. Um, and... This this back page for me, kind of the ones that I really like have got a really strong back page. Maybe it's just because I'm looking at it from like a GM point of view, or kind of imagining it could be useful for like solo play. I know I've I've sort of gone around the block a little bit on solo play, but 
I feel like this kind of format will lend itself really well to, to solo. Um, but the ones that I really like have really strong back pages. And then the ones that I like slightly less, I tend to feel like the back pages are slightly lacking. When I normally do a read through, I'm normally very hesitant to say anything negative. Even if I think something negative, I'm kind of like, well, I, I don't want to be that person. I want to come and sort of talk about what I like. Um, when I've got like 12 things that I like, all of them, I can't help but like pick the ones that I like slightly more. So anything that I say tonight that's like sort of, oh, I like this one a bit less... I still recommend every single one of them to, to grab because they're all, they're all in the same pack. So um, there's not really there's not really any point like ranking them or anything. But I'm just sort of interested to see which ones kind of leap out to me and which ones don't. Um, so the whole sort of loop loop ah, gameplay loop. Sorry, I'm using terrible terms. The kind of structure of the game is that you roll here to see if you can find a job. So I'll roll a d6, uh, a six. So that means there are two jobs available. So roll and choose between two jobs. Uh, so I would roll twice on here. The two jobs we have available. Uh, I can ferry a client who is a retired pirate to a wedding. Or I can salvage a ship with a weird and unlucky survivor. So I would have those two things happening at the same time. And sort of make the players choose which one to kind of prioritize. Um, Selena Land is like reading my mind um, we'll get to that at the end the thing that's just been mentioned in the chat um, but the thing that I really like is these uh, ship problems so three uh, comms are always staticky garbled it, it's it tells you something about the setting that a quarter of the like world content is dedicated to ship problems and the, the decisions as to what goes on these tables, it's like this is the entire world here for the setting. And I just love it. It feels like it feels like it's such a interesting way to present a setting. And it's, it's not like it's like 100% groundbreaking. Like there's loads of settings that have been based on random tables. But cramming it all into one page, I just think it really like sharpens it up. So let's say we're doing the job. Uh, we're, we're transporting the, um, the the retired pirate to a wedding. Um, where are they going? The wedding is at Judd's fuel stop in the Oort Cloud. So again, we, we're painting a real picture of like a particular type of space here that um, Captain Dallas with his Ford logo is taking a pirate to a wedding at a fuel stop. And number four, uh, a twist, a distress signal, but not quite on the way. So that distress signal, you could kind of work that in with the other job, I guess. Kind of salvage ship. So it's like, are you going to upset this pirate and uh, make him late for his own wedding? Um, or are you going to uh, ignore this distress beacon? What are you going to do? And already, I feel like I could like run that game. So this is Cosmic Highway. Uh, and I am going to look through them all, but I wanted to kind of like... I'm just checking my. I, I I did write notes. This is how you know I've been off for a while because I've um I've been distracted by um issues in chat. I've been distracted by technical issues on my thing. I've got the lighting all wrong in this room uh, because we've got a problem with the lights in here. Um, and I, I actually took notes, which shows that I'm taking this seriously. Um, obviously, each of these modules, I've just said you could kind of run it as it is. What I would like to do with it, uh my kind of dream setup I was thinking I feel like what would be really cool to do is that the, 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 there's a lot of talk about kind of like taking two books and mashing them up or just having like characters from different modules together what I would like to do is do like almost like an anthology like a black mirror type thing where each one is you, you do you do a single session of cosmic highway with a sort of set of characters and then next week in a system blues and you set up an entirely new set of characters um earth's a dump mars is a wasteland venus belongs to the elite if you can't afford a ticket out of the system you got to take gigs to survive today and maybe fight for a better tomorrow so this is kind of a gritty kind of cyberpunk um emphasis on the punk and rather than like captain and engineer you've got hackers grifters psychers um 
vidcasters. And, you know, you might be human, you might be an android. And rather than your ship, you've got all these, like, cybernetic upgrades you can take. You get lots of details for your character. They're going to give them that kind of cyberpunk flavor. The rules are kind of the same. Um, and then on the back, it's it's kind of a similar format in, the, in that you're doing jobs. But the jobs are all different. The locations are all different. There's more of an emphasis on contacts. Because you're kind of build, building your network in this city, presumably. So maybe we've done a week of Cosmic Highway, and then we've done a week of Inner System Blues. And then we do a week of Project Icarus. And do kind of a, like I say, an anthology series. Project Icarus is all about like these psychic characters. Uh, so, sorry, you're not, you're not necessarily psychic. You might be the sort of the psychic um, that are out on the run. Or you might be the agents that are trying to track them down. Um, so you have obviously systems for like psychic powers, whether you're a clairvoyant or a parakinetic or a telepath. Um, and this has one of my favorite tables on the back, which is how the session starts. So if I just roll straight away, I can get a nine. Um, so the session starts, hiding undetected, enemies audible. And all of these are really cool because they're just like, when you've got so little to go off, you need that little spark. So having like a, they're all kind of like tense situations to start your, to start your session off. Um, uh, Tim asks about um, the lack of a combat system. Yeah, there's, it's not so much that there's not a combat system. There's not like a dedicated combat system. Um, I'll come back to this because one of the later books does talk about this in a little bit more detail about how combat is managed. Um, it's actually the last book I'm going to get to. I'm sorry. But um, there is one of these booklets that is a bit... Well, tell, let, let's go to it now, seeing as we're talking about it. Um, so, like I've said, I would like to do maybe three different sessions in different books and then try and bring the characters together or like bring one character from each together and run like a sort of three-parter like the movie version of this series um but talking about combat and the rules one of the booklets in here is called emergency rules and let me just see how jason kind of pitches it it's it's almost like a I don't want to say a DMG. It's an ex yeah, it's an expanded version of the rules and principles. So this isn't a game in itself. This is like the system, and it talks a little bit more about how to actually run the system. And one of the things it talks about is how there's no hit points. So one successful roll can eliminate an enemy, and one disastrous roll can kill a player character. Um... And it, the risk of death is there, but if the GM never says you're risking death, a bad roll will never kill your character. And I think that's an in, that's a good middle ground where there's a like a little bit of sort of stake setting in there, which is something I'm interested in looking at at the moment myself. Um, I think for this kind of game, I think it's fine because none of them are none of them are that combat focused anyway. There's like going to be combat happening, but there, there doesn't seem to be any of them that are like. Um, Certainly in the 2400, there's not one where you're like space marines and you're like going to be going and like it's a Starship Troopers style game um, or a 40k style game. There's there's none of that really where you're assumed to be fighting a lot. Um, it's much more, it seems like it's, you kind of don't necessarily play a sort of combat focused group in the most part. Um, but this one... It has some really good principles at the back. Um, and it's reading this one really kind of cemented it for me that this is a really cool system because you know that got a soft spot for having a very simple core and then putting the core to work. And I do like having lots of principles that explain the simple core, but you know, Jason has put the core to work by you know putting it to work in these in these different books. So I'm gonna breeze through some of the other ones from 2400, and then I want to talk a little bit about well while I'm going on these I'm going to talk a little bit about what would I change about these if it was down to me um, because 
Selena mentioned in the chat um, said why said something about um, would you like would it be cool to like use the Ask the Stars system with twenty four hundred? And as I was reading twenty four hundred, it made me realize that this is the kind of thing I would like to do with that Ask the Stars system. Is this kind of very modular thing where you try and really distill elements of a setting down into like a spread almost and um and yeah it's 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 really inspired me to do something with ask the stars and on, on my list of things to do which is kind of a bit long at the minute i would like to do a kind of an ask the stars little booklet in this format that maybe has you know the basic rules and some some like tables like I, I think spark tables would work really well in here so basically what i'm saying is i'm going to be stealing all of jason's ideas but he credited me so i can credit him and you know we're just passing it back and forth i guess um but i think this format has got me really inspired to actually do something with that system so if you are a fan of ask the stars and what i've been doing with that and some of the primordial bastion land stuff that i spoke about um stay tuned because i think this this feels like an, a direction that i could see myself going in for Certainly for getting that stuff tested and getting that stuff out into the wild a little bit. So Orbital Decay is kind of the horror one. So you're like exploring a derelict. Um, I guess you could say it's the Mothership one. But, you know, Mothership doesn't have to have the, um, <laughs> the monopoly on space horror. Um, it's time that we, you know... It's time that we'd looked at other options. I think there's there's enough copies of Mothership floating around now after their Kickstarter. So the this one is the first one where I was like, oof, I take issue with this. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seeing things like this, there's a lot of there's a lot of white space here. And ordinarily I, I like white space in books books. I think it, it makes them more readable. But this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. I feel like I feel like I'd rather have some tables for the ship rather than like one ship layout but that's just me being greedy i kind of want i kind of want each booklet to like be filled with dense with stuff um which isn't really what i'd want out of a book but when you're dealing with something this this light in format i think you can you can really cram the extra information in um and this one is interesting because it adds like an extra little system there's like this stress system in there um there's ways for generating the creature that's on the derelict with you. But yeah, it's, it's got kind of a stress system, kind of like a, a sanity system almost, as other systems might call it. Um, and yeah, I I could see myself using this to run a mothership module. But I just I just wish this I wish this was some random tables instead of one map. I'm sorry. Um, EOS. Now this, uh, the thing that people... I've gone round and round on this artwork. Originally, the covers of these books were what grabbed me in and made me think, oh, what's this? I'll actually look at this. Then when I looked at what they were, I thought, well, isn't this just wasted space? Like you're already trying to fit lots of stuff into this booklet. Imagine if there was even more stuff on this cover. But the fact is, if it didn't have this cover... I think you know it's it's a cliche, but like the picture's worth a thousand words thing. I think I've I've now come round to the idea that I think these covers are actually really clever because you could fill this with more tables and more text and extra stuff, but I think a big evocative cover does much more to kind of get you in the mood and set the tone than all those tables can. So this is kind of like your I think it's kind of like Star Trekky kind of like actual like going round. In a ship. Uh, first contact was only the beginning. We couldn't agree whether to send soldiers, explorers, or diplomats, so the crew of the EOS is expected to be all three. So yeah, you're going out to seek out new life and new civilizations and all that stuff. Um, I like that this has a sort of alien table, and I was talking about spark tables. For those who don't know, spark tables in Electric Bastion Land are you roll, there's two columns with 20 entries each, you roll 2d20, and you sort of combine the two and try and make sense of it. So it might just be two words, or it might be like two conflicting things. And I've really come around to those kind of tables, rather than having like, I think preset table entries are useful, but I really like the challenge of like, well, here's two words, try and use those as kind of the spark of an idea. So here we might have an alien species that looks like lizards. They can burrow quickly. 
but they can't they can't move if surprised and the one you meet helps refugees that's our alien that's our kind of star trek alien and it's got some crewmates in here so it you know it's assumed that you're part of a larger crew why were you picked for this mission it's got little talents which are kind of like a lot of them have this kind of like system where there's like little powers that you can gain and here they're kind of like fitting your role and i guess the assumption here is compared to like cosmic highway you're you're more of a like a specialist like a you're more of a star trek character rather than a firefly character xenolith which is i i believe this one is inspired by like um mass effect i i, I only played the first mass effect very briefly and i've forgotten almost all of it but yeah, you're going out to explore these ancient alien relics known as uh, xenoliths, and it's kind of it's it's an interesting like parallel to EOS because there's it's kind of like a, it feels like a bit of a darker tone um, version of that. So I could definitely see combining these two. And yeah, if your character is an alien, you get some like weird alien traits. And then the Venusian job, which is a heist on Venus. And now I've said that the, the fact that I'm willing to say some things that I don't like about these books tells you how good they are. Because every other book I've read and looked at in this on, on this channel, I try and just be like all positive, even if there's little bits I don't like. This is like a nitpick, which shows that I actually, I really love these books books um but i think that gives me permission to like complain about one or two little things and much as in the orbital decay i wish this was like a floor plan of the casino instead of like a sideways map i know i'm asking for a lot here i know that these are a nice cheap pdf and i'm, I'm perhaps asking for more than i deserve but like a big casino map face like top down with all the little weird areas That'd be cool. So yeah, you're doing a heist in a casino. The characters are what you'd expect from a heist. It pinches little bits. I don't know if this is specifically from Blades in the Dark, but I know it's in Blades in the Dark. Like choosing your kit. So whether you're going with like a big loadout, subtle, or somewhere in between. And also there is like a built-in suspicion system. So kind of like a heat system here, which shows like, how much detection you've how much how much uh, suspicion you've um sort of stirred up during your your heist and there's bits of intel and this this is kind of like it looks like it would be one of the easier ones to just jump in and run but i just i just wish this map was a bit different code breakers is the matrix so i mean you can see now like the thing that i like about this is there's so much possibility for just picking two of them and shoving them together so yeah, you could have code breakers and the Venusian job and do like a sort of casino heist in the Matrix. You could mash up Xenolith and Eos and you're kind of doing like a kind of Mass Effect thing. You could you could mix up Eos and Cosmic Highway and have like um <laughs> what's the film I'm thinking of? Oh, I can't remember. Um I, I think maybe like Armageddon, where you've got like your like high class um professional Starfleet style astronauts and on this job they have to work with like the dirty space truckers you could put Project Icarus and have psychics alongside um, this Xenolith thing so maybe you've got like psychics on the crew if, if you haven't worked out by now I just love like taking two two different things and trying to find a way to make them fit I think it creates a lot of like interesting uh, opportunities for creativity so code breakers as you might expect, has a system for like exploiting the, I'm going to keep calling it the matrix, I'm sorry, but it's exploiting the matrix and like weird things you can do like bending bullets and, uh, um, you know, making someone freeze or copying objects and, but, but doing, when you use that, if you fail, it's going to alert one of these demons, which are like the agents. So again, very neat little mechanics that just like change the tone of the game. Zone is, I think this is like, um, oh, what? it's based on, is it called, a, what's it called? 
What's what's the film with the weird like? What's the film with the weird zone where they go into the zone? And I think Natalie Portman was in it. And um, there's a bear in there. That film, anyway. Um, I think this is based <laughs> this is based on that where you go into um, lots of people are naming zones and uh, it's it's not the right zone. Um, so you're going into this weird zone. I'm going to see how many more times I can say zone. Uh, Annihilation is the name of the film. Yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you to Tim for getting that. Um, and yeah, you're going into this weird zone and seeing if you can find out what's happening in here. There's weird like mutations and you can pick up weird alterations yourself. Um, so again, maybe combining this with like the uh, the orbital orbital decay for like a weird, like really lean into the horror. And I, I keep thinking I'm near the end. There's there's like three left. So alt is um, sort of the transhuman, sort of uplifted animals and sleeves and all that weird like super high sci-fi stuff. Um, and as you might expect, it's got systems for ju jumping into different sleeves and having like weird alternative bodies. Exiles is... I, I don't even know what I would do with this. Uh, I, I, I've sort of ordered these in order of, like, how likely I am to use them. And Exiles looks really cool, but I'm like, I don't know what to do with it. So, on the far end of the galaxy, a dead civilization left a world of ancient wonders and fell plagues. Now under orbital blockade, all who set foot here struggle to survive as exiles. So it's kind of following the same, like, job format as some of the other ones, but it's this weird, like... I, I, I get, like, ultraviolet grasslands vibes from it so you could maybe use this alongside ultraviolet um grasslands uh, by luca um it's it's bonkers and then the most bonkers one uh, i've not had to say this out loud i should have practiced this uh, tempers dirukit my latin is impeccable um this is like what happened if all realities crashed together as far as i can tell so it's like there's bits of time travel and like paramel, parallel universes and you might be a, a cyber assassin or a a giant cockroach or a chrono cop or a historian or a knight. It, it's just bonkers. Like <laughs> it's, it, it's probably not the one I would choose, but I love that it's in here. Um, it's just it's just bonkers. So they are all included in this 2400 uh, package that you can get on itch for an absolutely ridiculous price. Um, oh, Admiral Duxource points out that, um, yeah, that it's clearly Rifts. Um, the, <laughs> the last one that I pointed out. And that, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of using this for Rifts? Match made in heaven. Um... Yeah, just honestly, like twelve of these books. Just, just pick it up. The, the price justifies, like, I think if it was if it was a little pack of three for that price, I'd be pretty happy with that. But it's absolutely bonkers. Uh, there is a demo, which is, I believe, the full versions of Inner System Blues and Emergency Rules, which is like the the sort of adva not advanced rules, but like the the, the more comprehensively explained rules um just just get it um but that is not all um the beauty of this like i said as i was reading it it was just inspiring me like i want to do something like this and i think everyone else has had the same idea because on this page we are linked there's an srd that you can use to make your own stuff but also there is a um, there's a Discord server which is um, seems like a cool place to hear about what people are doing with the game. But there is a collection of twenty four XX games. So twenty four XX seems to like be the the tag for games that are based on that SRD on the twenty four XX SRD, and it's ridiculous. There's loads. Um, so the ones that really I, I'm kind of embarrassed about this, but the ones that interested me straight away, I'm like, oh, there's, there's limitless options. Uh, what could I play? And any sort of game you could imagine. How about Dungeons and Dragons? 
Um, so yeah, I, I feel a little bit guilty that I <laughs> I was drawn to this fourteen hundred, uh, which is by um, fourteen hundred is a little set of another five sort of booklets uh, by James Lennox Gordon, and these are um, these are as you might expect from the cover fantasy versions of twenty four hundred, and they're just really cool. I'm not going to go into them in so much detail because they kind of speak for themselves. Um, but again, it's you've got your kind of quest for your like your kind of standard fantasy. There's a dungeon crawling one, and for this one, I think I think for these, I would like to have a, each character come from a different book. So you know, you'd have like I don't know, maybe your warrior from the basic sort of quest book, and then from the below book you might have like a cartographer who's like the dungeon specialist and um maybe from this the sneak book which is kind of like this is even more like blades in the dark inspired you might have like the face and then there's a, an entire like mage book that has an entire magic system um kind of like again i, I love that the spells aren't the spells are just words. Like the, the the thing that if if you're gonna take one thing away from this, I would take that it it's a style of play that I'm starting to see more and more people get drawn to, whether it's through this or whether it's through the OSR or now I'm seeing more discussion of this around kind of FKR style play. And the key thing for it is I think like high trust play. So not trying to have a rule for everything because you're relying on the fact that the group will work it out whether it's having a gm that they really trust to make a fair call or whether and having the gm trust that they can talk to the players and sort of discuss issues and fix them at the table and come up with rulings um and the fact that the spells like create elemental is just a spell and there's no rules as to how that works you've just got to work it out divination is a spell and there's no rules about it so you have to work out with your gm how, how do i cast this what's this dreamscape spell i don't even know what that means uh, you have to work that out but it trusts you and it kind of gives you permission to get creative around that and then of course the last one is there's a planescape one because of course there is um so 1400 is um these these are all available separately so they do come out a little bit more expensive than the twelve hundred, uh, the twenty four hundred um, books, but I would give them a look if you're looking for something more fantasy based. Um, but yeah, I hope that has uh, given you a bit of an insight into why this uh, why this series of games is so uh, exciting to me at the moment. And like I say, if if you're interested in what I've been doing with the primordial system with Ask the Stars. I really would like to try and do something in this format. Uh, I hope Jason forgives me for just like stealing his idea. Um, but, well, that's. People are used to me stealing stuff by now. I, you know, they know what to expect. It's like that fable with the scorpion, right? Like, don't make your game really cool because I'm going to steal bits of it um, and then not credit you. I, 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 should, I, I probably will credit him. Um, but. Uh, that is all we have time for for now. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining me, uh, Who's for the people who come in live. Uh, thank you for putting up with my uh, rusty getting used to things again. Um, and as always, if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on with uh, Bastion Land, um, you can go to bastionland.com. Uh, you can join the Discord server there, which is the main way to stay in touch with me and see what's going on. And uh, if you really liked what's going on here, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bastionland and throw some support my way. Um, so until next time, um, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>